Hello viewers, my name is Dr. Bharat Vyas Marla. I'm a consultant physician and specialist in cardiodiabetology at Meditest Hospital, Parklands, Nairobi. Today, we shall be discussing about the pathophysiology of diabetes mellitus. Pathophysiology basically means how a person can get the disease. Okay? When we look at the diabetes, first we have to start with the anatomy of human body. This is our mouth. Connected to our mouth is a esophagus or in regular words foot pipe which extends from here until here okay at this place the uh, esophagus joins with the stomach the stomach is the organ where the food is digested just below the stomach at this area there is something called pancreas this pancreas when you look at it inside the human body it looks like a wet cloth just like from a wet cloth water drips drop by drop this particular pancreas which looks like a wet cloth it produces a hormone by name insulin this pancreas which looks like a wet cloth has some specialized cells beta cells these beta cells of langerhans are responsible for the production of the hormone insulin then what we have to look at is our human body itself as a whole our body is made up of billions and billions of small units which is called cells the cells are responsible for making up the human body each cell has is has its own function for example if you take the skin cells they are called squamous cell epithelium and these cells protect the human body from the environment and when you take the cardiac cells the cardiac cells uh, function is to contract and make the heart beat so each cell is specialized but for every cell to function, it requires energy. We get the energy for our body by eating our food. Any kind of diet, if we take and if we divide it, I mean, if we analyze it chemically, any type of diet has carbohydrates, proteins and fat. Whatever you take, the food breaks down into these three main ingredients. Apart from that, there are some micronutrients and vitamins that is a different thing which is not relevant for our discussion now. We are more interested in the carbohydrate part of our body which is responsible for the generation of energy in the cells. So whatever carbohydrate we eat, whether it is wheat, ugali, roti, rice, whatever we eat, all the carbohydrates which constitute approximately 60 to 65 percent of our diet, they break down into glucose after digestion the food it gets digested in the stomach and in the small intestines and from the small intestines the digested food is absorbed when once the food is digested the, especially the carbohydrate part it turns into glucose this glucose is the molecule which provides energy to our body cells as i told you previously the human body is made up of millions and billions and billions of cells so the cell has to take the glucose that is digested from the food. The glucose in the blood has to enter inside the cell for it to be utilized to convert into energy. Okay, so the cell requires the glucose to go inside. The cells require the glucose which is digested and absorbed in the small intestine and after absorption the glucose goes into the blood and the glucose which is present in the blood should enter the cell to make energy from glucose. So for the glucose to enter inside the cell, there are certain receptors present on each cell in the human body. These receptors are called glucose transporters. You can think of glucose transporter as a door which opens to allow the entry of glucose into the cell. Just like for any door to open, you require a key because every door has a lock. Just like that, the glucose transporter, which we thought of as gates, which open to facilitate the entry of glucose into the cell, glucose transporter is also a door which has a lock. To open this particular lock, it needs a key and that particular key is the insulin hormone 
which we discussed earlier in the video to summarize our cells need energy to function so this energy comes from glucose in the blood glucose comes into the blood after the food get digested and in the digestion process carbohydrates are converted into glucose okay and for the, this glucose to enter into the cells we need the doors of the cells to be opened the door is glucose transporter and the door requires a key to open its lock the key is insulin so this is the normal physiology which happens in our human body in diabetics this particular normal physiology which we described just a while back is altered so how is it altered first thing we we talked of pancreas which is present around here this pancreas we said that it looks like a wet cloth imagine what happens when a wet cloth dries up you don't get as many water drops from the wet cloth as it is drying up so what is happening in type 2 diabetes patients is that the pancreas loses the ability to produce adequate amounts of insulin in people with diabetes so this is one mechanism and this is the chief mechanism in people with type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes usually happens in kids or adolescents in type 1 diabetes what happens is because of autoimmune processes autoimmune process means our body has got white blood cells which are like soldiers protecting our body from infections these white blood cells because of certain genetic processes they get confused and they destroy the beta cells of langerhans initially we thought of we spoke of beta cells beta cells are the specialized cells which are present in our pancreas which produce the hormone insulin in type 1 diabetes the main pathological process is the beta cells getting destroyed by various mechanisms of which the chief one is autoimmunity the white blood cells present in the body they damage the beta cells and pancreas loses the ability to produce enough insulin or the wet cloth looking like pancreas loop dries up and enough insulin is not produced now when we think of type 2 diabetes in type 2 diabetes there is loss of production of insulin on one side and on the second side what happens is because of certain genetic processes we thought of glucose transporters which are like the doors which open to facilitate the entry of glucose into the body in type 2 diabetes apart from the pancreas drying up the lock which is present on the doors the glut receptors are altered and they don't open with the insulin inherent insulin which is produced so what is happening is the locks are getting changed when the lock is changed the key cannot open a door so akin to that process in type 2 diabetes the individuals develop insulin resistance which means that the insulin which is present in the body it is not opening the glucose transporters apart from that people will also lose the number of doors that is number of glucose transporters present on the surface of the cells to facilitate the entry of glucose into the cells so the insulin which is already there it is not working in the body which is called insulin resistance it is happening because the locks are changed at the same time the number of glucose transporters that means the doors which are present on the cell surface they are decreased in number so this causes insulin resistance so my friends this is the brief pathophysiology of type 1 and type 2 diabetes hope all of you have understood i tried to make it as simple as possible if you have any questions you can mention in the comments below we will answer you certainly hope all of you will like this video please press the bell icon press like share and subscribe